Bollinger Bands are one of the most popular technical analysis tools implemented in today's training environment. As the name implies, Bollinger Bands refer to the bands or price channels placed on a chart to represent a volatility range. Bollinger Bands consist of a set of three bands drawn in relation to price. There is the 20 period moving average in the middle, with an upper and lower band of two standard deviations above and below the simple moving average. Bollinger Bands use a statistical measure known as the standard deviation to establish where a band of support or resistance levels might lie. This concept is also known as a volatility channel. A volatility channel plots lines above and below a central measure of price. These lines, also known as envelopes or bands, widen or contract according to how volatile or non-volatile a market is. Bollinger Bands measure market volatility and provides lots of useful information, including trend continuation or reversal, periods of market consolidation, periods of upcoming large volatility breakouts, or possible market tops or bottoms, and potential price targets. Bollinger Bands are a trend indicator that detects the volatility and dynamics of the price on the market. The bands contract when the market volatility is low and expand when the volatility increases. During periods of low volatility, the bands are narrow, while during periods of high volatility, Bollinger Bands expand drastically. The upper band shows a level that is statistically high or expensive. The lower band shows a level that is statistically low or cheap, and the Bollinger Band width correlates to the volatility of the market. From a technical point of view, trading near the outer bands provides an element of confidence that there is resistance at upper boundary or support at bottom boundary. However, this concept alone does not provide relevant buy or sell signals. So the general belief is that when the price reaches the upper band, it is considered as overbought and when the price approaches the lower band, it is considered oversold. The Bollinger Bands have a default settings of 20 and 2. When using trading bands, it is the price action as it nears the edges of the band that should be of particular interest to us. Regarding the standard deviation of the Bollinger Bands, what is it? The standard deviation is basically a number expressing how much the values of the price differ from the mean value. Prices will distribute around the simple moving average. Around 65% of price action is contained within a standard deviation of one of the Bollinger Bands. Around 95% of price action is contained within standard deviation of two of the Bollinger Bands. And almost 99% of the price action is contained within the standard deviation of three of the Bollinger Bands. If you decide to backtest Bollinger Bands and play with its inputs, you can adjust the value of the standard deviation. If you lower it, you will see the price leaving the bands often, probably offering a lot of noise. However, if you increase it to 3, you will realize that the price will leave the band rarely and might be better to find dynamic zone of support or resistance. So, lower settings on a Bollinger Bands will generate more trading signals, but will also increase the number of false signals, as the price movement will exit more often from the bands. On the other hand, a 2.5 standard deviation or even a 3 standard deviation will generate fewer but high probability signals. Now, I prefer to trade with the odds in my favor, so if a standard deviation of 3 will offer me around 99 certainty that the price won't exit the Bollinger Bands, then I will be interested to trade only with these settings. How to trade with Bollinger Bands the use of Bollinger Bands varies among traders depending on their overall trading strategies, styles and goals. When using Bollinger Bands, many define the lower and the upper bands as price targets. Some buy when the price touches the lower band and exit when the price touches the moving average in the center of the bands. Others prefer to sell when the price falls below the lower band or buy when price breaks above the upper band. The upper and lower bands can act as dynamic resistance and support levels, as traders generally avoid buying when the asset price hits the upper Bollinger Band, respectively avoid selling 
whenever the price reaches the lower Bollinger Bands. In a sideways market, when there isn't a clear trend on the chart, Bollinger Bands provide very good support and resistance levels, as most traders believe that there's high chance of prices staying within Bollinger Bands. Studies have shown that the penetration of Bollinger Bands with a standard deviation of 3 occurs rarely. The rest of the time, price fluctuates within the Bollinger Bands and often the price returns to the middle of the bands. In this way, Bollinger Bands seem to act like rubber bands that can only stretch so far before snapping back to the middle. The upper and lower ranges of the Bollinger Bands, which are created by the two or the three standard deviation lines, create the boundaries of price. Since there are greater odds that price will be contained within the Bollinger Bands instead of penetrating them, one of the surest and most common ways of trading with the bands is to buy when price is near the lower band and sell when the price is near the upper range band. But not blindly. We talked before about price action. This strategy is suited in non-trending markets when there isn't a clear direction. Even more, when the bands are parallel, the signal is even more powerful. So we want to sell at the upper Bollinger Band and buy at the lower Bollinger Band when the bands are parallel and preferably if we see additional confirmation of a support or resistance. Here are a few examples of Bollinger Band signals during ranges. Also, you could take signals during trends, but only in the direction of the main trend. Why is that? Just because prices hit the upper or lower Bollinger Bands does not necessarily mean that it's a good time to sell or buy. Strong trends will ride these bands and wipe out any trader attempting to buy on the low prices in a downtrend or sell on high prices in an uptrend. In fact, price will be making new highs in an uptrend and new lows in a downtrend, hitting and exceeding the bands, quickly taking out stops on trades taken directly on the bands. So instead, we look to sell the upper Bollinger Bands during downtrends, meaning when the price is making lower lows and lower highs, and buy the lower Bollinger Band in uptrends when the price is making higher highs and higher lows. Practically, we look for pullbacks or corrections, but in the direction of the trend. We don't chase reversals. Here are a few examples of Bollinger Bands signals during trends. As we previously mentioned, the Bollinger Bands indicator measures the volatility on the market. The wider the band, the more volatility it has. A narrow band means indecision on price movement and, when this happens, it is almost guaranteed that markets are about to move either up or down. Also, if the market has recently experienced a lot of volatility and the bands are far apart, this is a sign that the market will settle down and trade into a range in the near future. Another Bollinger Band strategy that is relatively simple to implement is known as a squeeze strategy. Squeeze refers to the narrowing of the trading range and implies a potential breakout. It happens when the price starts shifting sideways in a tight consolidation. You can visually identify when the price is consolidating as the lower and upper bands get closer together on the chart it means the volatility of the particular asset has decreased. After a period of consolidation, the price usually tends to make a larger move in either direction, ideally on higher volume. Expanding volume on a breakout is a sign that traders are expecting that the price will continue to move in the breakout direction. The longer it moves within this narrow band, the more likely the market is eventually going to penetrate these bands and continue in the direction of the breakout, especially if this event occurs in the direction of the previously established longer-term trend. 
Timing is everything, however, and we just don't know how long the squeeze will last. How to identify the breakout? Look at the hooks of the Bollinger Bands. We want to see the upper band pointing up and the lower band pointing down. If the bands remain flat or just one band hooks while the other doesn't, the breakout isn't there yet. However, if the upper band is rising while the lower band is falling after a period of consolidation and tight range, this signifies that a potential explosion in price action is about to occur in the direction of the candlestick pushing against the band. The more vertical, the stronger the potential move. Here are other examples of valid Bollinger Bands breakouts. If you got any value from this, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon so you'll be notified each time we upload, and leave us a like to share support. Until next time.